Welcome everybody. We're going to talk about chromosome mutations in this set of notes. Uh, the standard that goes along with this is to determine the relationship between mutations and human genetic disorders. Um, there are DNA mutations, which we will come back to and discuss when we do DNA in Chapter 10. Today we're just going to focus on the chromosome mutations because that's what you're familiar with so far is the chromosomes. So there are two types of mutations, and these are in general. They apply to both chromosome mutations and DNA mutations. And the first one is germ cell mutations. These occur um, in the gametes, which means these mutations are passed on to the offspring. So when you hear of a baby being born with a genetic disorder, um, the mutation occurred in the germ cell. Um, your other cells, your body cells, such as your skin cells or the lining of your stomach or your bones, things like those are called somatic cells. And those mutations um, are not passed on to your offspring. So if you get cancer that develops in your skin or cancer that develops in your bone, those things are not passed on to your offspring because they don't happen in the, in the germ cells or gametes or sperm and egg cells. So uh, we're going to take a look at, and we talk most often about uh, the germ cell mutations because those are the ones that, as, um, as a people, seem particularly tragic when um, an, a newborn already starts out with um, a genetic disorder. So here are the chromosome mutations. Uh, the first one is called a deletion, and it's just what it sounds like. Part of the chromosome breaks off and is lost. Now, I hope that you know during chromosomes can, can detach and reattach. Um, this happens during crossing over as well. So this whole idea that bits of chromosome can break off and be reattached is fairly common. Well, a deletion mutation is when part of the chromosome breaks off and is lost, like we don't know where it goes or it reattaches somewhere else that it's not supposed to be. But if it is completely lost, it's called a deletion. Um, because different parts and different amounts of a chromosome can be deleted, then there isn't really like one disorder that we point to for this. The larger the piece of chromosome that's deleted, the greater effect that it can have on the offspring, including possible death. Um, sometimes it's an emotional thing to have a miscarriage, to have a baby die before um, it grows to full term, but sometimes that may be because of a mutation that has occurred where they're missing part of a chromosome and they're just not um, they're just not going to be able to to make it to full term and survive. So some of these deletion mutations can be lethal. Another chromosome mutation is called inversion, and this is where part of the chromosome breaks off, turns around, and reattaches. Um, so you can see in the picture here, you've got this pink part of the chromosome and the green part. And in inversion, what happens is it breaks, it turns around, and then it reattaches upside down. It can happen in one of the chromatids, like the bottom part, or it can actually happen around the centromere as well. You don't have to know that those are called two different things. You just need to know that it's when the piece of DNA flips around and reattaches upside down. Um, the possible disorders with these, for some reason, the most common inversion occurs on chromosome number 9 in humans. And for the most part, um, the effects of this are generally harmless. The information is still there, it's just in a different order. Um, so for the most part, these are not as harmful as the deletion mutations. Another one, um, and this one is called non-disjunction. Now let's break down this word because, and let's start at the end, junction. That's where two things meet, right? So disjunction would, would be where two things perhaps don't meet anymore. So non-disjunction is when they don't come apart. 
when they are still joined. And that's what happens with non-disjunction. Sister chromatids in metaphase 1 of meiosis, they don't separate. Okay, and then what that does is that results in having two of these long chromosomes when they shouldn't. They should only have one of those. And then some of the gametes have two of that chromosome and some of the gametes don't have that chromosome at all. So non-disjunction are those disorders where you have an extra chromosome so Down syndrome is one that we've talked about in the past where you have three copies of chromosome number 21 and it's called trisomy 21 because you have three copies of the number 21 chromosome. So the egg cell already had two copies of the number 21 chromosome and then the sperm cell comes along and fertilizes it and it also donates a number 21 chromosome and then you've got three. When you end up with a disorder where perhaps you only have one number 21 chromosome, it could be that there was non-disjunction and that particular um, egg or that particular sperm was one of the ones that ended up without the 21 chromosome. Because if you notice, these two have two number 21s and these don't have any. So um, non-disjunction is when they don't come apart like they're supposed to and so you end up with the wrong number of chromosomes in the egg cell or in the sperm cell. If that egg or sperm is fertilized then the individual or the offspring will have the wrong number of chromosomes for a particular chromosome. So those are the three types of chromosome disorders that we're going to cover. So they were the deletion, the inversion, and the non-disjunction. Make sure you can describe them, name them, and drawing a picture of each will help you remember them. Thank you very much.